Well, we describe it as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a triple effect. Essentially, the big issue is the so-called Tesla effect, the general end of the oil age theme that you know is a problem for these stocks. The second one is that as the oil price goes up, especially to the levels that we're at now and potentially beyond, it's almost as if the Tesla effect could be exacerbated by the potential for higher oil prices to accelerate the end of the oil age. And then finally, there's the overall issue of these companies, frankly, not having a great reputation in the market for generating good returns uh, and good returns to shareholders. And it's a, it's a, it's a real bad one, a, a, a triple effect that we saw really starting in 2017. This year, we've just sort of bounced around the lows that we've seen, which, by the way, are the lows since 1998, um, you know, 20-year lows in Wait, terms of relative. When you say Tesla effect, can you just explain that? The Tesla effect is just the, the, the overall concept that the 20th century was driven by oil, the 21st century will be driven by electricity. And there's a 30-year transition, and we're somewhere probably 10 years into that transition, and ultimately terminal value of oil has been severely affected by the potential for us to change behavior. Despite that, as you said, WTI doing pretty well, uh, as is Brent, to oil prices in general. What's driven it in the last couple of months, and, and can that continue for the rest of this year? Well, generally speaking, demand has been good for oil, and the market is now huge. It's a 100 million barrel a day oil market that we're looking at. So that really is a level that we struggled to believe 20 years ago. Uh, but ultimately, what's also been driving things which is less positive is Iran. And the fact is that when you get into a very risky oil market, and the market's clearly pricing geopolitical risk here, again, that's not necessarily positive for the stocks, because it's almost as if the oil price is getting out of control and ultimately will lead to a dumping of the price you know, over the, over the, over the spike and into the next leg. So it, it, it is a tough take for the oils, and it's, it, you know, it, it's been a struggle to try and get people to get excited about oil stocks, for sure. $100 is obviously a flashy headline, yeah. and everybody's wondering if we should be talking about that level again. Yeah, well, I joined Mizuho true? in May, and we immediately started talking about $120 a barrel. And the idea there is that we're going to demand destruction, that there's not enough supply, there's too much demand, and the market will balance itself by either encouraging supply, which really isn't possible, either because the oil is in government-held, uh, you know, difficult places such as Venezuela or Iran, or because the Permian is currently pipeline constrained. And so, therefore, the dynamic to balance the market becomes demand destruction, and it's a question of at what price does demand start falling. It's not now. We're not seeing oil as a major issue for consumers yet, and we're at 80 Brent. 100, we'll begin to test it. 120, we know for sure will be a problem. And so we're, our argument is that's where you're headed. What about rates and with it the US dollar? Does that factor into to your ultimate long-term forecast? Yeah, prices? because I think that part of the reason that global demand is so strong is global liquidity being so high. And that's manifesting itself essentially in very strong demand for oil. And the way we've all expected that to play out, ultimately the excess liquidity is through inflation. And the most efficient and, and global measure of at releasing inflation into the market, arguably, is the oil price. So that's, again, why we're arguing for 120 or a very, very high price. What's